Hello, and welcome to our webinar. My name is Mariella McElraith, and I'm the Director of Industry Advancement with the Events Industry Council. I'm thrilled to introduce Gwendol Castellan from Tourism Vancouver, Vancouver, who will be our moderator for today. Good morning, Mariella. Thank you, and good afternoon or good evening, depending on from wherever you're calling today. I'm really happy to be hosting this webinar on moving to eliminate human trafficking locally and globally. Um, so the Events Industry Council is a 30-plus member organization that represents over 103,000 individuals, 1,900, 500 firms and properties involved in the events industry. Our four signature programs, sustainability, industry insights, knowledge, leadership, represent the key initiatives, assets, and services, and products for the Events Industry Council. The Council works to advance the events industry and the professionals who lead the business of meetings. With that, I'm really happy to introduce uh, Giselle Barbosa from It's a Penalty. It is an organization that runs awareness raising campaigns doing major sporting events, which educate, equip, and encourage people to stand up against and prevent abuse, exploitation, and trafficking globally. In this webinar, we explore how working with a variety of stakeholders during your conference, meeting, or event can contrib contribute towards human trafficking and exploitation on a global scale. Uh, we also have a surprise guest at the end of this webinar. We have Michelle Colbert from EPCAT USA, who has a, a, a surprise announcement. So uh, stick to the very end because uh, it will be worth uh, hearing from her as well. So Giselle Barbosa is an entrepreneur and digital strategist for both third and private sector, as well as being the director of It's a Penalty since 2016. Giselle is the founder of a creative digital agency in London, UK. Uh, called Impactful Brands, a humanitarian photography project called Eyes on the Street. She's got a, a Bachelor of Arts in Anthropology and Media and over 10 years of experience in marketing. Michelle, welcome. Hi, Wendell. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm very happy to be here with everyone. I want to thank you, everyone who signed up to this uh, webinar. I, I've I'm really pleased to see down here that we have 468 participants. I am absolutely impressed. <laughs> um, it's about 4 p.m. here in London. And um, yeah, thank you so much for being here. I'm, I'm very pleased uh, for the opportunity to speak with everyone. So um, to talk, to start, to dive right in, um, it's a Penalty is an organization that harnesses the power of sport to end exploitation and trafficking. But let me tell you uh, what I will be talking about in this webinar and what takeaways you should be expecting to, uh, you know, take home with you. So I will talk about how It's a Penalty started. So I will give you some context. Um, why sports the central platform to convey the message? What is human trafficking? Who are the main stakeholders and how we work with them? I will also share some case studies from a partnership that we had this year with Hilton Hotels, Uber and Lyft. And as a takeaway, I hope you leave here today inspired by how brands like the companies you work for or the companies you direct can help towards building a better world through supporting projects like It's a Penalty. So, um, so yeah, I just want to jump to slide. Yeah. So why sport? You might be wondering why It's a Penalty uses the power of sport to convey such a difficult message. Um, Sarah de Carvalho is the CEO and founder of It's a Penalty. She is an English lady and she started a charity in Brazil, which is where I'm from, hence my funny accent. <laughs> she started a charity in Brazil in the late 90s to rescue street children. As a result of working for so many years with street children, Sarah realized how big the problem of underage sexual exploitation was. 
When it was globally announced that Brazil would host the 2014 World Cup, Sarah contacted the BBC here in London to do a report on underage sexual exploitation in the northeast of Brazil, which is where everyone, um, including the government, thought the problem would be much more uh, uh, worse. So they all flew to Brazil to film the documentary in the streets, mostly at night, and Sarah met a girl called Rose. So Rose was 16 years old and mother to two babies who she left at home with her mother while she was working on the streets. And Rose told Sarah that the situation was severe, that many clients were foreigners, and that there was many brothels uh, where girls were dressed up to look older than they are. And, um, and some of them forced uh, to work and coerced by pimps. Um, so after that, Sarah connected with the Brazilian government and local NGOs. Um, you know, she, she had been running a charity in Brazil at that point for over 15 years. Um, to find out what measures they would take to protect girls like Rose, because research shows that before and during major sporting events, the demand for underage sexual exploitation does increase. Then in 2013, one year before the World Cup, uh, Itza Penalty was born and Sarah needed someone who spoke Brazilian Portuguese, and that's me. <laughs> that's why I joined Itza Penalty at the beginning. Um, we then had the project validated by law enforcers like the Metropolitan Police and the National Crime Agency here in the UK. And we also partnered with the Brazilian Ministry of Justice. Then everything grew from there. I just want to move to the next slide. Thank you. But now, why sporting events? Um, so we believe that sport has the power to transcend cultural barriers, to bring nations together. Sport is an expression of our humanity. And in recognizing that, we decided to take a positive approach and work alongside the sporting events uh, and sporting governing bodies instead of against them. So we are endorsed by the International Olympic Committee, the Commonwealth Federation, the Super Bowl Hosting Committee. We have also worked with the Rugby Union Federation and we are developing relations with the cricket world so we can run its penalty in India in 2020. So we harness the platform of these major sporting events to communicate our message. Thank you. Um, sorry, the one before. <laughs> I'm sorry, this slide. No, the slide before. <laughs> before, yeah, that one. Thank you. So, how how do we? The next slide. <laughs> Thanks. This one. So how, how do we, um, what do we do? Uh, we educate people about the, the penalties for offenders and the signs to look out for. So now one of our focus is to really uh, share with people how, um, how people can identify the signs of human trafficking so they can make a report. We also equip people with the reporting mechanisms. So we um, created this interactive map on our website. It's a global map. So if you go to our website, uh, slash, it's a penalty.org slash report. And if you hover the mouse um, uh, uh, throughout all countries, you can see the reporting numbers for each country. And we encourage victims to speak up and the general public as well, because we believe we have to come together to um, face this global problem. We are also aligned with the um, global goals, goal number 16.2, uh, which is end abuse, exploitation, trafficking, and all forms of violence and torture. 
against children. And um, our global impact, um, I apologize, is a bit small, but each campaign will reach 100, around 155 million people, and I'll explain you why, so hang in there. Um, our campaign film, which you, uh, you will also see uh, in a few minutes, uh, are uh, shown in flight by international airlines. Um, through uh, the fact that we encourage people to report during these major sports and events, we also, through our partnership with the local law enforcers, we get a report back with the percentage of how, how, how the reporting has increased so we can measure how effective it has been. So, so far, oops, <laughs> sorry. I apologize about the slides, yeah. So far we have helped to facilitate the protection of over 16,000 victims. And we have spread awareness to a staggering over 183 million people. Um, uh, okay, so this side, let me just, just type this side, is it? Right, so, and ultimately, oops. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with these slides. Ultimately, we want to increase global awareness, prevent crimes, increase reporting, protect vulnerable people and children, reduce the demand for exploitation and trafficking, and of course, end human trafficking once and for all. That's the kind of world we want to see. These crimes are absolutely unacceptable, and that's why we do what we do. Um, moving on, I would like to ask every one of you a question, and I believe that... Um, my colleagues here, Gwendal and uh, Michaela, will send you a little question. <laughs> so, yeah, the poll should pop up in a second. There we go. We'll give you a minute to uh, answer this question, and uh, and then we'll. we'll yeah, and I'll here. yeah I'll tell you why I'm asking you this. We one our next campaign while you you respond will be in Tokyo 2020, and when we sat down with the Tokyo Olympic Committee, they turned to us and they said, but we don't have a problem or people don't really know what human trafficking is. And we realized that actually we are not doing enough to educate people about what actually human trafficking is and how it has changed uh, within um, the past couple of years, how um, it has become a lot more complex. So that's why I would like to know um, if about your knowledge on human trafficking. All right, so uh, we start to see the results here. Okay. And this is quite fascinating. What do you think, Giselle? It is. It is. It, it's, I mean, we have 607 people now and um, for uh, for me, because I've been working with this subject for uh, six and a half years now, and and for us, it's like it's obvious, right? It's always in the news. There's a lot of organizations talking about it. So clearly, people will have an understanding about what human trafficking is. But um, you know, we should never ever take for granted, and that's why we we are doing the work that we are doing to help educate everyone with the signs to look out for, and more importantly, the, the reporting mechanisms. I think some people can't see the poll. All right, so, I mean, the poll, what we saw was that 175 of uh, our webinar attendees uh, said they had a, a one to three uh, they felt that they, 
they didn't know much about human trafficking yet. So let's, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a, uh, let's just know that we've, we've got some work to do. So uh, let's move on to uh, the rest of the presentation. Sure. So it's very important to understand that human trafficking is a global problem. And, um, and it's, it's, it's really fascinating how we managed to um, run a, a global campaign in different countries and tailor it to the local needs and yet have a global positioning. I think that's what we have managed to really uh, master over the past uh, couple of years. And I've left some um, statistics here for you guys. Uh, I won't read them. Um, you can just take them home with you. I believe the presentation will be available. But one thing I can tell you is that human trafficking is the fastest illegal and the uh, growing industry in the world and the second largest criminal industry in the, in the world. So what is human trafficking? We have this definition from the, the UN, which is, is the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of threat or use of force, coercion, abduction, deception, and the abuse of power. So I won't read it all. But what I want to tell you is that most of us would imagine that human trafficking involves someone being kidnapped, chained up somewhere, moved across borders, and exploited by strangers. And this can be the case, but the reality is that most people are trafficked within their own communities, cities and towns, and coerced into exploitation. While the traffickers may threaten their victims with violence and blackmail, some will take advantage of their victim's vulnerability to control them and even promise an opportunity of a better life. And anyone can become a, a victim of trafficking for labor and sexual exploitation, regardless of age, background, or location. But, and here's the most um, annoying detail for me, 71% of the victims are women and girls. So, how do stakeholders can join and have an impact on our campaign? So, our main industry stakeholders are airlines, airports, hotels, taxis, ride shares, local NGOs, and the media. These are our kind of top um, stakeholders. So the idea is that we build an awareness journey for people traveling to these events. That's why we start from the airlines, in the airlines. So therefore, our main, our main industry stakeholders are, like I just uh, read to you guys, um, we obviously aim for more than these four uh, segments that I've given you. Uh, like, for example, sometimes we try to partner with um, public transport uh, companies, but it's not always possible. So, and we have two main campaign assets. Uh, one is the campaign video, the 30 second video that we show is normally shown in flight by American Airlines and British Airways, featuring our high profile sports and ambassadors. And we also have uh, campaign materials for display. And I will explain to you how they are displayed at hotels, airports, uh, taxis and ride shares. So um, shall we see the film now? Sorry, for some reason the sound is not uh, is not broadcasting. This worked well when we were <laughs> when we tested it. Oh, 
cool. We can try again now. <laughs> Is that okay, Gwendol? Yeah. Sport brings people together. We stand with this penalty against the exploitation and trafficking of vulnerable people. These crimes are illegal. Offenders will face prosecution in the United States or in their home country. If you see any signs of exploitation, dial this number. Your call could save lives. These crimes will not be tolerated. It's a penalty. Thanks, Gwendol. So this film you've just watched, or are we repeat? Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> so this film you've just watched is a 30 second video, awareness video that is shown by international airlines like um, British Airways and, um, and American Airlines, which they are the two airlines relevant, for example, for uh, the Super Bowl. The video you just saw is um, is the campaign, the 2019 uh, Super Bowl in Atlanta. Here on this slide, you can see some of our main ambassadors. So we have some pretty uh, good names. How we got these people? <laughs> this is a very um, it, it's a unique story for each one. Is literally attending events, finding out where they are, running after them like crazy contacting people, um, you know, that literally talking to friends and asking, do you know this person? Do you have, do you know someone who could possibly know him or her, any agency, or sometimes we just Google them and we find out uh, their agents and we write to them to <laughs> no success because you should never ever go through agents because they, you know, these people, they receive hundreds of requests uh, per week. So the best way is to find someone who knows them that can um, give a personal message. That's what worked for us. Um, right. So just to give you a partnership highlight between American Airlines and British Airways for the campaign. So we normally reach uh, per campaign, just with the airline alone, 39.2 million passages. So that's the first awareness touch point. That's how we call it. Um, American Airlines, they also um, give us an in-flight magazine ad uh, at American Way, their magazine ad, which is amazing. And, and for them, is also a good opportunity to be seen to be part of a campaign that cares um, about human trafficking. And it gives intangible branding value for them. So here's a picture of the, uh, the video. It's, this is just a cover image of the video um, on the back seat screen. And this is a picture of our campaign ad at the American A in Flight magazine for the 2019 Super Bowl um game event oops we have to go back right just moving on to the next slide sorry i want to sorry <laughs> This one. Moving on, um, we also produce campaign materials for display. Here you have an example um, of the materials we have produced for the Super Bowl in Miami now. So this is um, the, the poster here on the left hand side is the poster that will be um, placed at hotels. For example, hotels can display um, on back of, uh, at the back of house, uh, front of house, lifts, at the back of toilets, for example. Um, the, this, these two small cards here, these are pocket cards. They were very successful last year and we've been asked to repeat them. But we also make wristbands. Um, this year we are, we are making lip balms and what we do 
Through working with the local NGOs, they bring together hundreds of volunteers that the, normally the partner hotels give us a room where the volunteers can all come together and assemble this, these awareness packages, which will then be distributed by the, the, um, through the volunteers during the event. So it's a very well coordinated uh, activity. Oh, sorry, we can just go back. Back. <laughs> back, no. <laughs> I apologize, I'm going back, yeah. So this is, um, oops. So this material is a, a mirror rear tag that we, we produced last year, well this year for the first time because we had an amazing partnership with Lyft and Uber um, so we put the um, a call to action and we also add the local um, reporting mechanism and the website uh, for people who, um, you know, are not from the US, but they want to find out more about the work and maybe learn about the reporting mechanisms in different countries. So um, just just back on the uh, on the um, car rear view tag, it the partnership we had with Uber and Lyft last year it was absolutely amazing because remember we we build um, an awareness journey and the first touch point starts with the airline and then when people travel to the major sports and event then at the airport. So we, last year we didn't have a partnership with the Atlanta airport. They said no to us. But this year we are having an amazing and very well orchestrated partnership with the Miami airport. So there will be, uh, you know, those screens when people are uh, just, just getting their bags so that the campaign film will be shown on those screens and that the airport will also distribute campaign material. So this is the second awareness touch point. Then people... They get in the taxis, they, they will hop on an Uber or a Lyft, for example, and then they will see the message again on their way to the hotel. When they get to the hotel, it's then the fourth awareness touch point. So they, when they arrive at the hotel, they will get the message again. So this is for the public. And we had like um, so many messages. We spoke with so many drivers who are on the front line of the problem, driving girls um, who they could clearly identify as minors to places. Um, and they, they don't know what to do. They feel exposed. They feel that they feel scared if they say something. So to have a company like Uber saying, actually, that's okay to say something because this is an initiative that is coming from us. So they felt extremely empowered to be um, part of the campaign and they also felt a sense of um, you know of pride to be work to be working for a company that is caring for people so that was very impactful and we are repeating the partnership with uber this year so we are very excited and we feel it's going to be an ongoing uh, partnership and moving forward we want to we're trying to get through airbnb because uh, I, I i have a my gut feeling tells me that, you know, as, as well as hotels, Airbnb is a place where um, traffickers and, and victims can easily be checked in and is another, you know, is another touch point we want to have a presence. And it's all about working together. Um, we take what I call a global call ap approach. So we aim for a global impact because we know this is a global problem, but we also enable local participation like the local drivers I just told you about. And we help to build the legacy, um, the local legacy by working with the NGOs, the volunteers and everyone that's involved. So we share it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very good sharing experience of knowledge. Um, 
how we approach all these people, well, I wish I had a secret recipe to give you, but I don't. We start mapping out our contacts and for each activity that we need to carry out. And then we ask that we ask our, you know, even our friends, do you know this person? Do you know someone in Airbnb? Do you know someone in Uber? And we keep going until we find um, a way in. But the important thing is we do not take no for an answer until we have absolutely exhausted our options because it's all about persistence. The secret of doing this job is no other than persistence. So I want to share with you a case study from the Hilton Sorry, I'm just going back to the first slide. Yeah. So I want to share with you a case study from the Hilton Hotel, a partnership we had with Hilton this year, uh, which I briefly touched on. Um, so we partnered with 40 Hilton hotels. So basically, they've trained not only their management staff, but also every, everyone in Atlanta. In these 40 Hilton hotels were trained to spot human trafficking. The campaign film was shown in rooms and the materials were given to guests as they checked in. And for Hilton as a business is amazing because they, they will have an impact and be seen by their guests as, as a safe place, as a place where no crimes are allowed. So this is for their brand is it's quite impressive. So here, oops. <laughs> Can we go back, please? Yeah, thanks. So here are a few pictures. Sarah, the CEO, giving training um, at Hilton. A poster on the back of house. Um, one of the staff holding the leaflets. We also produce leaflets. Um, so yeah, it was pretty amazing. Now I just wanna give you a case study um, well, I think I've, I've already given you the case study uh, for Uber and Lyft. Um, so yeah, we, we gave training to the management, uh, introduction to drivers. They, the drivers really embraced the campaign. And it was amazing because Fox News, they came to us and they did an amazing report with the drivers. And they, the drivers, they shared these really impactful stories about the situations they face when they're, they're carrying these girls around and they don't know what to do. Or when uh, men ask them, do you, know, do you know where I can find so-and-so? So they don't really, they don't have a protocol to deal with that. So they shared that they felt really uh, vulnerable and like left to their own luck to deal with stuff like that. And by being part of the campaign, it was a total game changer for them. So here are a few pictures of the uh, driver. So we, we went to the lift office. We've given them all the materials. We got everyone together. It was really fun. Um, here are a few pictures when we visited Uber. So that was also super fun. And here's the real impact. It was why we do what we do. So we had 18 sex trafficking survivors were identified and recovered. And this is, this is not in the presentation, but basically what we, as a result of the volunteers going to many hotels and motels, um, 18 sex trafficking survivors were identified because we also bring, we put along the package, the list of missing children. And uh, just during the Super Bowl, there was 169 arrests made by the FBI. So as you can see, is a real, real problem. So when we, when, why, why should companies partner with us? Why should they do it? Why should they care? So, um, sorry, <laughs> we need to go back. So it's obviously an opportunity for brands to make a difference in the lives of people who are, you know, for whatever reason, that is not their fault, is never the victim's fault. Never, never. 
um, for whatever reason they've been put on that situation, you know, any brand that supports it's a penalty, a hundred percent, apart from paying our salaries, <laughs> is going towards a hundred percent is going towards funding this work, is funding everything that we do. And then there's the, you know, it's very, branding wise is something absolutely powerful, is intangible value. And we know that we, we are living, we are, we're literally on the, you know, on the verge of a new paradigm. It's, 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 it's all about working together. We know that millennials in their majority, they do not want for companies that don't care. We are just living on that moment where people want meaning. They want to make a difference. So for companies to work with us is, is really good for their branding and, you know, getting their employees involved and contributing with the work that we're doing. We run a massive social media campaign. So for some companies and, and partners, because we also have charities, bigger charities that fund us, we involve them in the creative process. They join the social media, the whole social media strategy, which I do um, some of my uh, tasks to do. So we, we run a global social media campaign. So there's a lot of work to do. So there's, there's opportunity on that side as well. And so for your, for your industry, I, I've, Gwendo told me a little bit about uh, your industry, so I'm sure there might be ways um, that you can collaborate with causes like ours, even in your local community. This is one of the things that we, also, we always talk about. If we inspire people to carry on contributing, it doesn't have to be with us, but with their local community to get involved and find out what's the situation and try and do something about it. So here's just an overview of our upcoming campaigns. So you can have a look. We are already getting uh, setting up for Tokyo 2020. I'm very excited about India, the cricket in 2021. And it looks like the Super Bowl is going to become a regular. This is the third Super Bowl in a row we do. And we, we will set up an office in New York next year. So it's looking very good, very promising. The, here are our social media um, handles. So you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And here's my email. You can email me directly if you would like to have a chat bounce ideas uh, and i can share my telephone number with you if you would like to have a one-to-one -one call and and i think that's it thank you very right. much <laughs> thank you thank you so much Giselle, for that presentation and we have a uh, some time now to, to go through some Q&A and then I'll introduce um, Michelle Gilbert uh, to give her uh, announcement, uh, surprise announcement. Um, so uh, in, in the Q&A here, we have um, uh, several people have been asking about the signs uh, to uh, identify human trafficking. Um, I noticed in, in, in some of your, the cards and materials you created, you, you had a list it was a little bit too hard just to read in the um, in the presentation uh, it, because it was it was small. But um, can you share some of the key uh, signs to help uh, as meeting organizers, or people who are working uh, in the industry, that would be uh, 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 resources that they can share to help people identify human trafficking? I see the signs to look out for. Okay, let me just get them. Just one second. We have a full page, and I will share the link here on the comments with you all. Because we have nine signs. We basically, we've consulted with um, experts, with other NGOs like the Endit Movement, ECPAT, and other law enforcers. 
and we, we, we put together nine size signs, which are the most basic signs to help people to identify these kinds uh, of crimes. And you can access them on itsapenalty.org slash know the signs. Excellent. And as far as working uh, with um, uh, suppliers in, in meetings, you, um, you partnered with Uber and hotels. Is, is, are those some of the key touch points that you would recommend um, uh, for meeting organizers as well? Or are there any other key touch points to be aware of? You, you mentioned airports and airlines as well. Yeah, um, it would be amazing to have a more orchestrated, um, you know, uh, awareness journey, if possible, with public services like transportation services, like uh, um, like trains and public buses and. Um, and other types of transportation services because human trafficking will always involve moving people from one place to another, not necessarily across borders, but it involves movement. So any, any source of transportation for people, it's very extremely important for us to have a presence. So we, we are pushing, <laughs> we're getting there slowly, slowly. Okay, uh, I have another question um, uh, from Divine Lim here. Can you speak about what happens to those who get arrested by the FBI or other authorities? Um, do, you, do you have a sense of follow what, what happens um, uh, beyond just the, the numbers, the statistics that have been affected by a campaign or do you, is there a mechanism for you to, to sort of know, know what happens after that? So basically, just to, to give a bit more context, when we, when we come into a country, the first thing we do, for example, if we know there will be a, a major sporting event in Miami, for example, and then what we do, we contact the, we find out who the local NGO who is partnering, who is the main NGO for that, for the uh, major sporting event is, because they're always the point of contact, the main point of contact. And then from there, we, we try and find who are the main people we need to talk for, since it's always the law, the law enforcers. And we partner with the hotlines, because par a major part of our work is to uh, publicize the hotlines and, and give people the number so they can dial during that period of time. But obviously, when people learn something, um, when it's very well uh, communicated, they will, they will not forget. Um, and then we get a report from those law enforcers to you. So you, we can see during that period, we compare with the same period in the year before, and we can understand how effective the campaign has been. Because the idea is that these crimes do get reported because unfortunately they go unseen. And the more people speak up, the better, including victims the more victims they find out that there's actually people campaigning for them that is not okay. They don't have to uh, submit themselves to, uh, to a pimp or, you know, being exploited, the better. But coming back to your question, um, you know, going to the bottom of, of what happens with the people that are imprisoned is not necessarily what we do. Um, we, we are not law enforcers and there's, there's an, an element of um, privacy, um, you know, information that can't be, I can't, you can't hear me. <laughs> Can everybody hear me? Oh, you can hear me. Okay, great. <laughs> I can't hear you, Gwendol. Anyway, so coming back to the um, to the question, unfortunately, the police is not always willing to tell us um, further details. 
and it's not so much part of our job to be on that side of the equation, if you will, because, you know, we pay taxes to the government. It's their job to do that, if you see what I mean. Our job is really push, push and push and push to get a more, you know, a strong movement with people to understand that this is not okay to give victims the, um, the chance to speak up and, and, the, and you know, the knowledge that they have, um, they have ha there is help for them on the other side, if they want to reach out for. Okay. It looks like uh, Gwendol is having some uh, trouble with the audio. So I'm gonna jump in as a uh, as temporary moderator here. Um, I did wanna ask a, another question that we, we're having some questions about uh, an app called Traffic Cam. Uh, is that one that you're uh, that you can tell us a little bit about? Which one? Sorry, uh, trafficcam.com, where you can post uh, pictures of hotel rooms uh, to help uh, law enforcement uh, identify uh, backgrounds. No, but uh, I think it, that's amazing, and I want to know more about that and reach out for them. So, do you mind typing on the chat box so I can uh, copy and paste? Absolutely. It, there's a there's a number of links that are on there. Um, it's yeah. uh, it's a site that allows you to uh, to post uh, images. They they usually ask you to take four uh, different images of of hotels of hotel rooms so that they can look at things like uh, wallpaper patterns and uh, the types of linens that are being used to be able to identify uh, where uh, trafficking is taking place when they see images. Uh, they can uh, use that database to help identify identify that's what's happening that's amazing that, that's exactly the type of organization that we work with um, it's amazing to partner because at the end of the day we can't do everything we are good at doing what we do which is having this global call and 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 making a, a big noise and have a huge impact to our um, global sporting um, ambassadors um, but there will be other more localized things that we are not able to do. So that's, that's why it's all about working together because we all, we, you know, organizations, they can all contribute in different ways and the same for businesses. Uh, Gwendol, do we have your audio back or should I ask the next question? Uh, yes, I'm back on. If you have a question, I think that's great. And then, um, I'll, then maybe I'll we can hear it. Yeah, I'll, I'll start the next one off. Uh, so, uh, for sporting events, uh, is the trafficking happening spe specifically at the events, or is it just during the events and at the same place because of the events um, attracting it? So, basically, what happens is, bef even before the event takes place, the pimps, they, they get really well organized and they start recruiting girls, and they, they have very, very uh, complex when I, what I mean by complex is very sophisticated ways of working. Um, and so the demand increases during, just bef even before major sporting events, the demand increases. Great. Uh, Gwendol, should I pass it back to you? Sure, yeah. So I think we're at uh, 10 to, um, so I was going to um, keep Giselle on, but also introduce Michelle uh, Gilbert from FCAP USA, who had a, a, a surprise or special announcement to, uh, to add and, and wanted to make sure that we took the advantage of the fact that uh, Giselle was giving us this great presentation on it's a penalty and, and human trafficking for major sporting events. Michelle, hello, welcome. Uh, do you want to uh, uh, start up and let us know what, uh, what your surprise announcement is? Hi, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And Giselle, that was an amazing presentation. So it was great to be sitting in in the background a little bit. So just as background for those of you who don't know, um, so I'm Michelle Gelbart and I'm the Director of Private Sector Engagement for ECPAT USA. And our mission is to protect every child's basic human right to grow up free from the threat of sexual exploitation and trafficking. 
On the next slide, we have a little bit about our program. So, um, you know, the goal that we have for the future is a world where no child is bought, sold, or used for sex. And we do that in four primary ways. And the last one is probably the most relevant to your industry. So we do that through youth engagement. We work in schools to help kids understand human rights, understand things like healthy relationships and online internet safety, because the internet is often used to um, recruit or target vulnerable youth. We work with community engagement, so helping legislators and law enforcement understand the issue a little bit better so that we can all work together in a community to address the issue. We also work to pass federal laws and state laws that protect victims of exploitation or kind of close loopholes in what's happening right now on the issue since we've come such a long way since ECPAT was originally founded in 1991. And then the last thing we do is we work with the private sector. So we help businesses, especially in the travel industry, understand the important steps that they need to take to address the issues um, of child exploitation and human trafficking. We help uh, major business in the hotel industry and in the airline industry to put in place training tools and mechanisms to address the issue. And we also work closely with meeting and events professionals, business travel professionals to understand, you know, what tools and resources are helpful in addressing the issue. So we, this year on the next slide, you could see that we launched a a really awesome initiative. So our goal for this year, for 2020, is to get 20,000 business events professionals trained by the end of 2020. And we developed a training to help you do that. So um, on our training, Moving Beyond the Front Lines, you understand a little bit more about the issue. So if you go on the website on ecpatusa.org slash 20 by 20, you can become what we call a BE, business events protector, and it's through getting trained. So you learn about the issues. So a lot of what we discussed today, then also really important tools. So how do you talk to, you know, your clients about this issue to make sure that they address it? And then how do you talk to suppliers about the issue? So for example, we've seen um, the wonderful work of meeting planners, especially with meeting planners against human trafficking, um, to raise awareness about the fact that you can put RFP language in your contracts to ask about this issue. So are you asking the hotels that you partner with to put in place training before you host your events? Are you asking them if they're members of the ECPAT code? So are they comprehensively addressing this issue? And so the training helps you not only understand the issue and how to identify it when you're traveling, but also will help you understand how to have conversations, maybe sometimes tough conversations with um, buyers, your clients, and then suppliers. So on our website, um, you can also find sample contract language. So if you go to www.ecpatusa.org, we have sample contract language, we have sample RFP language, and it's really useful in getting you the tools that you need to, um, to understand the issue. So on the, the last slide, I do have my contact information, and I'll also put in the chat the different links that I talked about, but um, you can always reach out to me. We are always looking for new corporate partners, meeting planner companies who want to comprehensively address this issue, so want to do it um, in their business practices and make sure that you're you know, making these, these initiatives part of your core structure. Thank you so much, Michelle. Uh, uh, to me, um, having both of you uh, speak today shows that uh, from the largest sporting events, uh, whether it's the Olympics or the Super Bowl, all the way to the smallest local meeting uh, being organized anywhere across the U.S. or Canada or around the world, um, there are uh, resources and it's the uh, opportunities to help uh, um, eliminate human trafficking. Um, it, it, and I understand that EPCAT has partnered with its a penalty um, in the UK in the past, and, and I think this is a, a really wonderful uh, one, two. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, I think that 
as, as what we've learned over the course of the, I think, 30 years that we've been in existence is, you know, no one group, no one industry, no one person can do this on their own. And so it's incredibly important for, you know, the public sector, the private sector, and everyone, every single person on this webinar to do a little something. And then that's when we see the impact that we need. Well, thank you to thank both you, of you uh, and to Gwendal for being uh, for being a part of our webinar today. Uh, this is something that uh, the Events Industry Council is really interested in helping to amplify the voices of uh, organizations such as both of yours that are doing such important work, uh, because this is something where our industry can really make a difference uh, in the lives of people at their most vulnerable. So just a couple of uh, additional things. I know everyone is interested in uh, obtaining continuing education credits. So these are automatically uploaded within a week of the event, provided that uh, the email address that you use for registration matches the one that, uh, that we have for your account. Uh, and uh, if you uh, would like to self-report uh, your, your credits, you will also receive a confirmation of attendance within the next hour that you can upload to your, to your account. Um, I'd also encourage you to, uh, to do the 20 by 20 training because it is eligible for CMP continuing education credits as well. So, uh, so visit that, the website to, uh, to get some more uh, specific information on how to identify the signs of human trafficking. So uh, we do also have a couple of other uh, programs to announce to, uh, to let you know about. Uh, so we have uh, just uh, uh, opened up the call for applications for our IMEX EIC Innovation in Sustainability Award that really looks at all aspects of sustainability and we'll be celebrating that uh, in May. So I encourage everyone to, uh, to share their stories through the application. Uh, we're also doing uh, a second webinar this month, uh, which uh, normally we only do, uh, do one a month, but we have two really important issues that we wanted to talk about in addition to today's webinar. We'll be part of uh, the 24 Hours of Reality Truth in Action series uh, with a, another webinar this Thursday, same time of day. So hopefully you'll be able to, uh, to join us uh, for that. And, uh, and also just a little uh, surprise announcement again, uh, next month we'll also be offering uh, another webinar uh, on December the 10th. Uh, it will be our first time offering a webinar in Spanish and it will be all about the events industry and the sustainable development goals. So I encourage you to join us for that one as well. Thank you very much uh, to all of you for being here today. The incredible uh, response to this, this uh, very important topic is really inspiring. And uh, I'll close us off a couple of minutes uh, before the end. And thank you all. Thank you, Mariella. Thank you, Giselle. It was a real pleasure to, uh, to be able to host you today. And have a, have a wonderful day. And uh, I hope everyone um, has taken something from this uh, presentation. Thank you very much. I just want to thank everyone who, you know, who stayed until the end. I've, I was like copy and pasting so many uh, ideas and links. I'm really pleased and thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. I hope to be in touch.